What do the, you mean? D, the DNA, the gene to take risks. Right. Because it's like me. Most people thought I was bananas to be at 24, the youngest person in the entire company in my role. I had the world promised to me, right? I could have gone on for another 20 years, made millions of dollars, retired maybe in my mid 40s, mm -hmm. which I'm approaching, right. <laughs> you know, uh, and, you know, to the average person around me, that's the life. Right, right. I would rather live my life on the edge knowing that I took, <laughs> I, I right, gave right. everything I had to give. And if I fail, so what? Yeah. Versus I live this cushion, safe, controlled life and rose through the ranks of corporate America and made a ton of money. But mm -hmm. then at, you know, midway through it all, I'm like, shoot. I really want to do this. Right. I really, but now I'm afraid to take the risk to do that because mm -hmm. I'm afraid of what I'm giving up. And mm -hmm. I think that that alone is a major difference between what, from my vantage point, between some of my small business owners right. and those who worked in large institutions. Gotcha. And 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 that carries over in life in many ways. In many ways, mm -hmm. I'm not saying in all ways. Right. So I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I'm saying, but in many ways, the resilience mm -hmm. of the small business owner, I, I see a greater resiliency factor mm -hmm. because of their willingness to take risks and rebound and bounce back from them gotcha. because they've been presented those opportunities. Right, before, right. Right. And they have a wiring and a proclivity toward that. Mm. Is that something that can be developed or? I think so. That just got to be in you. Because I, I mean, since I was a kid, I just. I'm the type of person, I'm just going to start, I'm just going to do it. I don't really think of, you know, what the outcome's going to be. Obviously, I'm, I'm hopeful for the future. But, you know, some people, they just, their whole life, they, they're just not wired that way. They're sure. wired to see all the potholes, and I don't even see them. Sure, sure. I think, yeah, I think it can be learned, but I think there's, you know, Usain Bolt running 100, and then there's me. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, we both can run the 100 yard dash, right. but I think someone who's, who has your wiring or maybe even my wiring, they're probably gonna get there faster. Right, right. Cause they're, 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 you know, so you can teach a slower person the form <laughs> and everything of how to run the 100, yeah. but they're not gonna beat Usain Bolt. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, right. so you can develop to get there in terms of the skills and the protocols and everything required to get there, but at the end of the day, some people just have it. Gotcha. I think I think some people just they just it's just in them yeah. to just go. Right. And right. and I think you have that get up and just go. Mm. And I think I'm wired the exact same way. And 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 in many ways, I will say my childhood really enforced and informed a lot of that. Right, and so right. I do believe I personally do believe that there's elements of our life's experiences right. that trigger some of that. You know, mm -hmm. but then I look at my son and daughter. My daughter is more of a risk taker right. than my son. Really? Yeah. So some of that is just DNA. She's yeah. definitely more wired like me. Um, you know, and and you can just see the difference in her willingness to take. Matter of fact, she's literally parasailing right now. Really? Literally <laughs> parasailing this morning, as I speak to you. Right, literally right. right now, she's in Cocoa Beach, Florida, with a friend, and wow. they are parasailing right now. My son wouldn't do that. <laughs> like, yeah. no, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And I think, you know, that, that I've learned one of the strategies is if you're not that type of person, you probably need to get around or partner with that type of people. You know what I mean? Like, because I'm, I'm the get, get out and go, but sometimes I, um, I don't see, I have the mentality, everything's going to be okay. Like, right. I'll, right. When, when I reach the problem, I'll just fix the problem, yeah. right? But you kind of got to get some people who can see the problem before it starts, right? So kind of partnering with your counterpart or hiring or, you know, having a team, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and let me, and, and even as I was drawing the analogy of my son and daughter, my son is, is innovative, creative. He takes risks, but I, I would say the extremity mm. is different or, or the, the, the polarization of the risk mm. is different. So it doesn't mean he doesn't take them. But to the point you made, he's more wired to size up the problem or even take a step back. So right. when a problem is in the air, I rush toward it. Right. Right. And boom, my son is going to take a step back and size it up and then go to right, it. And right. so that's why I use like the Usain Bolt. Like yeah. some of and, and in some cases, me rushing toward it, it happens. Right. But then I 
when I mess up, I mess up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right, right. And we're so, going to take the L. We're yeah, going to take yeah. a big L. Let's exactly. Go. So the precision of the person that takes a step back right. is probably over the, the precision of the problems they do decide mm -hmm. to take on over time is probably better. But in the long run, I, th I just personally believe those that, uh, that take more risks faster. Mm, yeah. I, in fact, I think there was, and, I, and I'd have to go find this, but I, I think I read like an article where they did some research or something over like the lifetime earnings mm. of, you know, of, of entrepreneurs. That's, and it was like a, a, a big difference. Wow because of, of the long-term, yeah. you know, um, while there were ups and downs like the market, yeah. the long-term value yeah. uh, of, of taking those risks fast and recovering from them. Right. Because uh, I think off. you probably get, you get way more experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's the best way to learn. And when a problem arises, chances are, I've been here before. I've seen something similar to this. Absolutely. Before. So I know how to get around it, but somebody that's a little more calculated, even, um, smaller problems, it's hard to handle because they're not used to handling problems on a constant basis. As an entrepreneur, we pretty much solve problems all day. That's we encounter it. them every single day. Uh, absolutely. I, I can't remember I, I had, where in my business I had a day where everything was great and I didn't have to solve some sort of problem. Absolutely. Some absolutely. bigger than others, smaller absolutely. problems, but um, yeah, I've been solving them for my whole yeah, life. Yeah, in fact, I tell you, know, if you think about it, your ability to problem solve has a direct correlation to, you know, the earning potential, Absolutely. right? I mean, the bigger the problems you're solving or the bigger the platform that they play themselves out, there's a correlation there. And so I, I, I'm, I'm blessed, you know, when you look at these assessments, whether it's the disc profile or leading from your strengths or I, I, I look for problems. Yeah. Like I can't, if you ask me, you know, what I'm, you know, something that I, like I, I just undeniably look for problems. Mm. I'm passionate right. about problems. Right, right. <laughs> you know, so sure. I get up in the morning looking for something right, right. to fix. And my wife doesn't like that all right. the time. <laughs> <laughs> right, you right. Know, but, uh, but in reality, man, yeah, I, uh, problem solving brings me joy. Yeah. And so as a result, I'm not, a, I'm not as afraid of failure. Right. Because odds are in order to solve the problem, I have to look at it and take risks from maybe 10 different angles right. before I figure it out. Yeah. And I think some people are more risk averse. Yeah, it all makes sense now why you started the company Amazing CEO because yeah. companies have problems. Absolutely. Every company has problems and having somebody that's looking for the problems outside of the company because I think while you're in the company, you're so optimistic, Absolutely. right? You're like, Absolutely. okay, it's a problem, but maybe not. I, I mean, it's just taxes. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get it handled. Sure. But somebody that's focused on the problem, they're like, no, we need to solve this right, right now, now so it doesn't trip yeah. you up later. Yeah, that's good stuff. That, and, that actually makes sense. Real quick, too, and I, it just hit me that that's what you asked me. I didn't answer it earlier, but how did I even get into starting Amazing yeah. CEO? And so I actually kind of stumbled into it. Mm -hmm. And what I – so in summary, though, it was the reality that – a lot of the people who are running these major companies and or a lot of successful entrepreneurs, there were people helping them solve the problems of the business, mm. but not the problems that they were having both outside of the business and or in result of having the business. So you help both. Business. You help with both parts. Exactly. Of that exactly. Like, exactly. So it's a really a holistic approach to, again, seizing business problems, but through the lens of the human being. Gotcha. And I think, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think that that's a different model and what I call a redemptive approach to mm. to solving problems in the marketplace. Uh, because, again, most people are looking at how do I come in and look at your systems, your technology, et cetera, in order to make money off the business itself. Right. I want to come in and say, how do I help you, the individual? Because if I can help you, the individual, odds are the byproduct is then we can now move toward helping the business. Right, right. And, and that, that's a little bit of a different model. And it's a longer term journey mm -hmm. and walking with the client and right. walking with the people. Wow. And yet I love every second of it because in the end, what I care about more is that the people are healthy and that the people are progressing. Mm -hmm. And I just, from the root of me, believe that the byproduct is that the business at least has a better chance of success. Right. It won't always be successful. Right. Because, you, you know, I mean, 
90% of businesses fail within the first three years. So sure. that tells us something. Mm -hmm. If you start 10 businesses, nine out of 10 might not make it, right, generally right. speaking. Mm -hmm. So you should, and those of us who aren't risk averse, right. we're okay with that. Right, 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 right. Let's <laughs> just hurry up and get through right, these nine. Right, but, but through that process, people have pain that they have to deal with. And hopefully there's someone else like me out there that can help them navigate the course of that pain. Good, and so, good. yeah. I love it. All right, well, last question. We want to wrap this up. Okay. Um, but I like to, well, it's not a, yeah, it is a question. So I like to make predictions. Hmm. Um, I would like for you to make a prediction of who Anthony Flynn will be, you, your company, where you'll be in the next five to 10 years so that we can look back at this in the year 2024 and I could look and say, yo, Anthony said he was going to do that. Hmm. Oh, he actually did it. Ten years later, he actually did it. Yeah. So, yeah. like, I just want to get it documented on camera. Okay. What you know you'll be able to accomplish, and we don't, can't tell the future, but what you feel like you'll be able to accomplish in the next five, ten years? Well, that's a great question. And I think my goal is to be one of the most appreciated executive and business coaches in the world. Mm. And and notice I didn't say wealthy is or anything, but, but – I want my platform, I, I, want, I want people, the impact that I'm able to have on people and their businesses, I want to see that celebrated all over the world, not for self-glorification mm. whatsoever, uh, not for self-aggrandizement, but I want the testimonies of impact to carry themselves so that I'm invited to be able to go into great spaces and impact businesses at the highest level. Wow. Because if you think about what's driving and moving our economy, it's these top companies in the world. Mm -hmm. And I want to be at the table with those key decision makers who are you know, billionaires and who are top-notch, considered top-notch CEOs, because they're the ones impacting the lives of tens of thousands of people on a daily basis. Wow. And so I want to be highly regarded and highly respected in those spaces, 100% for the sake of influencing at that leadership level so wow. that we can do business differently in our world uh, wow. and in our economy. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, there you have it. Uh, a whole bunch of gems. You just sat through a master's class. So you watched this whole interview, man. Uh, Anthony Flynn, I appreciate you, my brother. Uh, please just uh, leave us with some departing words and how they first off, tell us how we can contact you and then give us some some drop the mic information. Absolutely. So uh, Instagram, Anthony Flynn underscore AC, mm -hmm. Anthony Flynn underscore AC on Instagram, and that's for Amazing CEO. Uh, you can email me directly, A Flynn. Of course, I'll push it to my assistant, yeah. but A Flynn, A F L Y N N, at amazingceo.com, A Flynn at amazingceo.com. And I truly believe, man, and just as a, I, I just go biblical, man, your gift will make room for you mm -hmm. and bring you into the presence of great men. It's real that your gift really will make room for you and bring you to the presence of great men. I, I have, I'm living it, the, mm -hmm. the example of someone who found something they were decent at, right, you know, right. and, and it's working. And, and I, it's like I'm a magnet for CEOs, executives, and people who, who live at high levels in our culture, mm -hmm. but who don't feel they have other people around them that they can go to. Right. And, uh, and so, uh, by stepping into that responsibility that God gave me, I, God is sending the people. And I've been able to be a blessing to so many key influencers in our world, people who are running multi-billion dollar companies, mm. literally. And, uh, and so, man, it's been a gift. It's been wow. a blessing. Wow. Well, Anthony Flynn, man, I appreciate you, my brother. And uh, make sure y'all follow. Follow, okay, especially his Instagram. He got some great stuff on there. Follow him on all social platforms. Share this with somebody else, okay? Also, if you're looking to sponsor our podcast, reach out to us, info at realsocialproof.com. Mr. Flynn, I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Thanks for all you do, man.